Today, I'm bringing you 10 brand new patriotic DIYs perfect for Memorial Day and 4th of July. Stay tuned. I'm Rebecca Virginia, and on this channel, I make DIYs mainly using Dollar Tree items. Today, I'm showing you brand new patriotic and Americana themed DIYs for 2022. Let's get started. I absolutely love this time of year when we have Memorial Day coming up and 4th of July. I think because I get to incorporate so many beautiful and bright colors into my crafts and DIYs, I usually keep it pretty simple in the browns, staying with the rustic farmhouse theme. But for this time of year, I really get to just use a bunch of fun and bright colors. So I'm starting off, we're gonna be making some Let Freedom Ring dice. And I'm doing this by taking the foam dice from the Dollar Tree. And first, because they are a fairly kind of bright orange, I am just going to be pretty much priming them. I got this primer little sample set for free from Home Depot. So that's just what I use to kind of prime everything, especially with these foam dice. The paint really soaks into them, so it's nice to use some freebie paint on first. Also, let me know in the comments down below, but I could have sworn that they used to have three dice in a set, but when I went to Dollar Tree, there were only two in a set, so I had to buy two, but I might be remembering wrong. <laughs> Anyways, I am painting these to, of course, look like the USA flag, so I have two that are red, one that is blue, one white, and as with many of my DIYs, I gotta dirty it up. So I'm taking a chip brush and some white and brown paint and just going all around the faces of our dye to distress them a bit and add some dimension. I then used my cutting machine to cut out Let Freedom Ring and a large star, but you could always just paint this or you know use a paint pen if you have been blessed with nice handwriting, I am very jealous of you and you could definitely do that instead of using some vinyl. I am so obsessed with these patriotic pinwheels. I think they came out so cute. And the best part is there is no sewing involved. When I originally saw a picture of these, I was like, they're cute, but I'm gonna have to sew, which I can do, but you know, then you gotta get out of the sewing machine and that's a whole bunch of work I didn't wanna get into. So these are gonna be some easy no sew and we're gonna be making two of them. So I have my two different types of fabric and I cut out four squares. These are four by four squares. I also cut out four heat bond ultra hold iron on adhesive pieces which you see me putting on now. I'm going to put one on every square. Again this is also going to be four by four and this is just to make them nice and stiff so they can remain in that pinwheel formation. It also doesn't say anything about being weather resistant and I would only use these for decoration but I have found that when you do use the heat and bond ultra hold it does seem to withstand a little bit of water that I may or may not have accidentally spilled all over my fabric but I definitely don't think it would withstand a rainstorm or anything. I also saw online that you could use Mod Podge for this instead because I will say the heat and bond is a little bit pricier but I personally haven't used the Mod Podge, so I can't really speak to that. But once you have ironed these on, wait for them to cool, and then you can peel off the backing. And once you have peeled off that backing, we're going to head back to the ironing board one last time. I wanted my pinwheels to have two different types of fabric. So when I take it back over to the ironing board, I am going to have the area where the adhesive part is. They are going to be touching and I'm just covering this. This is just a piece of fabric and this is purely just in case any of that adhesive in case it were to leak out. I don't want it getting on my iron so not a necessary step and a lot of people have covers or some other sort of cloth they don't really care about but that's just to protect my iron from the adhesive. I'm then taking a pair of pinking shears and going around my two squares so that the edges of my pinwheels have a fun little pattern and aren't just plain. 
Next, I need to find center. So I am doing that by making an X across my little square. And then of course where the X's intersect is where my center is going to be. Then from my center, I am measuring out one inch and making little marks. This would be amazing if you had chalk. I could not find my chalk, so I had to use pencil. And once I had made those one inch marks from center, I went back in with my pinking shears and I know that the mark that I made is where I need to stop the shears so I don't wanna go all the way to center. The next part is really easy, but be careful. That's why I have on these little finger protectors and I am just popping a little bit of hot glue in the center and then every other area I'm going to be pulling forward and hot gluing on top of one another, making of course the infamous pinwheel shape. And that's why I'm wearing the finger protectors because you do have to hold it in place for a little bit of time just to make sure that everything dries correctly and you do not want to be burning yourself that would really hurt. For the center of your pinwheel you can really pick whatever you would like. I had these little wood buttons that I thought were very cute and gave me the Americana vibe so I went ahead and placed those at the center of the pinwheel. And then for the pinwheel to, you know, actually become the pinwheel that you could either stake in the ground, put in a floral arrangement, or just use as decor, I am using a bamboo skewer stick. And these ones I picked up at the grocery store and they kind of have this flat head area that was really great for hot gluing to the back. But if you're not able to use those, you can use regular skewers or some of the really cute red, white, and blue themed paper straws that the Dollar Tree has out right now, I also think would make a really good base for our patriotic pinwheel. If you are someone who has a bunch of scrap fabric or scrap ribbon laying around, then this DIY is definitely for you. Adding in the blue jean patch just gives it the complete vintage Americana vibes. And this one might look complicated, but it's actually really easy. I'm taking a wood dowel from the Dollar Tree and I also have this jean pocket, but we're not gonna add that yet. And then I had cut out just a bunch, mostly scrap fabric, although there are some ribbon pieces in there as well, of red and white in all sorts of different patterns and shades. And I had a bunch of those ready to go. And I'm just, actually I was watching a TV show while I was doing this because it's pretty mindless. It's really fun, but you definitely don't have to completely pay attention. And I just started adding all the different ribbon and fabric scraps to the wood dowel. Now that I have enough of the scrap fabric and ribbon covering the area where the pocket is going to go, I am able to go ahead and add that. And similar to how I added the ribbon, I just created a fold at the top of our jean pocket and used some hot glue to place that over. And then I just kept doing what I was already doing using the different scraps of the red and the white pattern fabric and ribbon and just finishing that up so it started to look more like the USA flag. For the next part, I could have gone with just some plain white vinyl stars, but I really wanted this to have a bit more of a vintage feel. So I created a stencil out of some scrap vinyl that I had, and then I went in with a sponge paintbrush and some white paint and sponged over the stencil so that when I eventually removed the stencil, I had some nice white stars I really like the very homemade look of the paint. You can kind of see some runs in it. And I just think it looks like something you would see in like a Levi or very kind of American denim brand high-end store. I also added a little bit of jute on the ends of the dowel so that I could hang it up. It was time to change out my front door decor, so I repurposed one of these mason jar signs from the Dollar Tree so that I could hang it up for Memorial Day and 4th of July out front. This mason jar Dollar Tree sign also came with some stars on it, which I already peeled off and used on different DIYs. 
And for this project, I just flipped the sign over. It was some plain MDF board and I painted that white with a primer again that I got from free at Home Depot. And I'm going to start off by painting the top of the mason jar section blue. I actually ran out of my navy that I usually use for 4th of July and Memorial Day decor, which is really funny because it's named English Navy, which defeats the entire purpose of 4th of July um, with the whole England versus America thing. But if you are in the store, English Navy is just the absolute perfect navy for any 4th of July or Memorial Day stuff. And apparently I was just running out of everything because I also ran out of painter's tape and I couldn't find any at my Dollar Tree, but I found three rolls for $1.25 of electrical tape at my Dollar Tree. And I seriously think that this tape worked better than painter's tape. The lines came out so crisp. So I was really in luck. And if for some reason you can't find painter's tape, the Dollar Tree electrical tape worked really well for me. And after I have added on my white and red stripes, that area between where it meets the blue, I am just covering with a bunch of, you guessed it, my favorite material ever to craft with, jute. So I am just wrapping a ton of jute around this center section of my sign. Dollar Tree had some really pretty USA themed ribbon, so I toyed with maybe making a bow out of that, but I wanted to keep it pretty simple on the front door, so I ended up just making this really layered jute bow and just hot gluing that off to the side. And next I needed to add all of my stars to the top of our mason jar. So using my cutting machine and some white vinyl, I cut out a bunch of stars and just added them kind of sporadically all over at the top of the mason jar. In honor of Memorial Day and to all those who have fought for our country, I decided to make this USA cross. Memorial Day and really all patriotic holidays are especially special to me because my father and grandfather are veterans. So I really wanted to make something that was a little bit more special and sentimental. It's always fun to do 4th of July decor and DIYs, but it also is really important to remember what Memorial Day and these holidays are really about. So for this one, I am just using the tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and I painted them. Some I left natural and then others I painted blue and red and I am adding some more of those tiny white vinyl stars and just placed these in a cross formation, but of course also a formation that replicates the American flag. And to get all of these to stay together, I just used my hot glue gun to adhere everything. Although I guess in true tumbling tower block of fashion, you could attempt to put them all together without using glue, but I don't think it would come out to do well. And lastly, just to distress it a bit and make the natural wood look like it was burned wood, I took a stippling brush and some dark brown paint to add that effect to the different pieces of our USA cross. Next, we're going to be making some fun wood firecrackers that have a cute little snap crackle pop saying on them. I also have a, another set of firecrackers that I will show you how to make later in the video. They're a little bit smaller, so if you don't have these wood pieces laying around, you can still make a really cute firecracker DIY. I also drilled a small hole into the top of these pieces of wood. Doesn't need to be deep, we're just gonna be sticking some wired jute in them. So after I had cut my wood pieces out, I painted them red, white, and blue. And then using white and some black vinyl, I used my cutting machine to write out, or cut out really, snap, crackle, pop. And as the little lighter of our fireworks kind of makes it look like a stick of dynamite, I am taking some of the wired jute from the Dollar Tree and I just spun that around a pencil to kind of get the curly design. And then inside the holes that I had drilled, I just tucked that down in. And I liked the look of the trio all tied up together. Again, it just kind of reminded me of a dynamite pack. So I grabbed some jute and wrapped them all up. 
I adore the bookstack DIYs. I have done a couple of faux bookstacks and I've also done a bookstack where I cover the books. But for this one, I wanted to go more of the traditional route. So I have three books that I got at the thrift store and I pulled off the cover, the backing and the spine. There was a little bit of residue left on the spine. So I just went ahead and peeled those off. And then to get them to stay in an actual stack, I took my glue stick and just made sure to hot glue down each book onto the other. And on the top book, I made sure that the side with less words was what was showing. Then using my cutting machine, I wrote out God shed his grace on thee and I cut that out of the machine and put it on the book's spine. I did paint the top of the book stack white just because you could kind of see the barcode. And then I'm taking one of the flags from a napkin from the Dollar Tree and I'm cutting it a little bit more down to size so you only see the flag portion. And then I'm putting Mod Podge on top and I'm not being careful. I'm allowing it to wrinkle. I thought it made the whole book stack and the flag look more weathered. So I'm really piling on the Mod Podge because I did like how it looked all wrinkled and I even, you can see me going with my fingers, I'm trying to tear off the bottom so that it looks more like a torn flag and like this has been there for a while. So I waited for the Mod Podge to dry and then I went in, just had to further distress it some more with my stippling brush and some brown paint to just weather everything up even more. For the final touch, I wanted it to look like the books were held together by string, not by the hot glue. So I went back to my handy jute and wrapped it around a bunch of times on the book stack and added a bow at the top. I also embellished it with some rusty star charms that I had and some wooden stars that I had in my craft stash already. I love interchangeable decor that you can use for different holidays and seasons. So I decided to transform some wood houses that I picked up from the Dollar Tree into patriotic wood houses instead. I like to use these as some farmhouse decor throughout the year. I did end up having to take the jute ties off of them, but I have an idea for something that I'm going to use in the fall. So my plan is to do one side patriotic and one side fall so that all I'll have to do is switch them around as the seasons change. This is always really great to do because especially when you DIY as much as me, you don't want to have to keep buying stuff. It's nice to repurpose. So on each of these houses, I'm doing different designs. So one of them is going to be blue with some stars on it. And one, I'm going to go more traditional stars and stripes. Again, I am using that handy electric tape from the Dollar Tree. I know it's not the purpose, but it really worked in a pinch when I didn't have any painter's tape. I picked up some of this Oracle stencil film from Amazon. Personally, I would recommend the Cricut stencil film over the Oracle. It's around the same price, and I did find that this bled a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. So I made a stencil just of stars in a pattern and laid that down onto my wood house, making sure to really press around the stars, really trying to make sure that it didn't bleed through. And then I grabbed my dapper sponge brush and some white paint and just sponge painted on the white paint so that when I peeled off the stencil, there would be some nice white stars left. I distressed the house with the stars on it using a chip brush from Apple Barrel and some white paint. And then I distressed my striped house using the same chip brush and some dark brown paint. For both of our houses, I am wrapping them in jute, I think about three or four times. And then at the center, I tied a bow. I used the two stars from our previous DIY when I made the mason jar sign. I put the tin one on the striped house and then I did the red glitter one on our star house. The next DIY is a really easy one, but I thought it was cute, so I wanted to include it. And it's just a God Bless America cutout. I will have this link down below so you can print it out. Or if you have a cutting machine like me, you can transform it into an SVG file, which for all of you who have cutting machines, you know what that means. 
I picked up some of this wallpaper from the Dollar Tree and just placed it down into a frame. I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but it's kind of not worth it anymore now that the Dollar Tree is the dollar twenty-five tree because you can find really nice paper for twenty-five cents at Hobby Lobby. But I had a bunch of it that I bought, so I kept reusing it. I did cut out using a navy and red with the God Bless America, and I ended up going with the red, although I did like both of them. And again, I will have this link down below if you decide that you would like to recreate this patriotic DIY. The Dollar Tree has these wood palettes out year round, and they're one of my favorite items to do DIYs with. This is a, another quick and easy one. I guess I need to stop saying that because they're all pretty quick and easy. I am just taking one of the wood palettes from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be transforming this into a flag using some red, blue, and white paint. After painting the palette and then dirtying it up just a little bit with some brown paint, I added a thick jute bow and a wood star to the center of the bow that I stained using some water and brown paint. And that is going to conclude the first 10 DIYs. We're gonna move on to the next 10. Those were my 10 brand new patriotic DIYs, but I also wanted to share 10 that I made from last year in 2021. These were some of my favorite crafts that I have created in over a year. So I just had to share them again. We're gonna start off with this really cute patriotic windmill. So I'm starting off taking this welcome windmill sign and it is from the Dollar Tree. And then I took my paint in red and blue. I left an empty space in between where I'm painting red because I'm going to be adding in white later. And then I took the blue paint and painted those right next to each other because that's going to be where I put the stars in our flag. I didn't want the white on my windmill flag to be a really bright white. So I just took a little bit of brown paint and mixed that in with the white to give it more of a cream look. To create the stars for this DIY, I'm going to be using a star hole punch, but I only had really bright white cardstock, and again, I didn't want the stars to be really bright, so I'm just mixing in some white with a little bit of brown. And now that the paint has dried on our cardstock, I am taking this star hole punch. I got it back during Christmas time because I wanted to create some stars for Christmas DIYs, but it works really great for patriotic DIYs too. And these stars were so tiny, it was really hard for me to pick them up, so I went ahead and got a pair of tweezers to help me out. And then I just dipped the back of our cardstock stars into a glue stick, and then I used the tweezers to also help me out with taking the star off of the glue stick and placing it down onto our windmill sections. And I just repeated this process. I ended up adding about, I think, 10 stars total on each one. No, eight. There you go. I added eight stars on each of the windmill sections. I wanted this DIY to look a little bit more rustic and kind of like the windmill had been sitting outside for a while. So I took my stippling brush from the crafter square section of the Dollar Tree and some brown paint. And I just kind of slathered the brown paint on and then took a paper towel to wipe off any of the excess. And I really liked the distressed look that this gave to the windmill. I haven't decided yet if I'll display this inside or outside, but I think it's something that I'm going to end up leaving up all summer long. The next DIY is a hanging wooden flag sign with some star spangled elements. I actually repurposed this from one of my old DIYs. If you didn't already guess, this is an old one that I made for Valentine's Day, but we're gonna be changing it up for some patriotic crafting. If you want to see the full tutorial of how I made the Valentine's Day sign, I will link that above, but basically all that I did was take three of the wood planks from the Dollar Tree and a Dollar Tree sign, and then I just used a bit of floral wire to attach them together. So I am going to be leaving that one plank white, so I just repainted it, painted the center brown wooden plank red, and then painted the other wooden plank white as well. Then I took some blue paint and I'm covering up the welcome section of the sign. Next, I'm going to be making three corrugated stars out of cardboard. All that you do is basically pull back the piece of cardboard and you get this corrugated cardboard material. And then I just drew out a star and cut it out and basically use that as my own stencil. So now I'm just tracing around the stencil that I made and cutting out the stars. 
You could cut them out and then tear them apart to find the corrugated section, but it's a little bit easier to cut if you first pull the cardboard apart at first. I found this America the Beautiful principle online. I will be sure to link it below. It came in a plain white color and then this more old looking kind of distressed yellowing color that I am using. And I'm once again taking my star stencil and when I cut, I'm just gonna cut a little bit inside of those lines so that the corrugated cardboard still is going to show through when we take our glue stick and glue down the music notes onto the corrugated star. After I used a glue stick to adhere the America the Beautiful music notes down onto the cardboard, I kind of just placed out how I wanted everything to look. So I put the wood planks back under the red floral wire and just positioned everything out before I went in with my hot glue gun and just adhered the wood planks to the red floral wire. And then I did the exact same thing once I figured out the position that I liked of the stars. I went ahead and took that hot glue gun and adhered them down onto our sign. I love this DIY in particular because I was able to reuse supplies that I already had and repurpose a DIY for a new project. I was in love with the sparkly silver vinyl the Dollar Tree recently came out with, so I knew that I had to use it in this United We Stand DIY. I started off by taking a wood palette from the Dollar Tree and I'm alternating going red, white, red, white. And you can see in just a second, I must have been getting tired when I was doing this DIY because I put the red at the bottom and as soon as I was done, I realized what I did. So that's why I'm doing that with my hands. Don't do that. Um, I meant to do red, white, red, white so that I would look like the flag. And I went ahead and corrected myself with the white paints so that they were alternating red and white and red and white. For the stars that are going to go on the wood palette, I found these really pretty mason jar USA freedom signs at the Dollar Tree. They're really cute, but I kind of destroyed it when I was taking the stars off. But don't worry, I'll definitely be using that mason jar sign in a future DIY. And I wanted to keep the one star its tin color. I thought it was really pretty. And then I painted a wood star that I got at Hobby Lobby. I got a hundred for like, I think $3 at Hobby Lobby. And I painted that in a dark navy. This looked very Captain America to me and I really liked it. The Dollar Tree recently came out with adhesive metallic vinyl sheets, but they also have these that I found in Crafter Square, which just said adhesive glitter sheets, nothing about vinyl. But I went ahead and used that on my cutting machine and wrote out United Stand, and then using plain white vinyl, I put the Wii on top of the star. If you don't have a cutting machine, you can always use stickers or adhesive letters from the Dollar Tree, or if you even have good handwriting, you can go ahead and freehand this. The next DIY, I'm not even sure if you can call it DIY because it is so easy, but I realize not everyone has time to be crafting all day, but maybe you still want to be festive and celebrate in a patriotic way. So I found this free principle online. I know it says Happy 4th of July, and I'm technically putting this out around Memorial Day, but you could either save it for the 4th of July or the website that I will link down below with this printable also has a lot of other really pretty patriotic principles that don't say happy 4th of July. And I'm just cutting this picture down to size to fit into my frame. I made this frame during a Valentine's Day DIY video, which I will link above. I took two Dollar Tree frames and put them together to create a really cool multi-dimensional frame. And again, I will make sure to link that above in case you also wanted to create this frame. patriotic tray that is perfect for any picnics or barbecues you might be having this year. The Dollar Tree sells these wood trays in the crafter square section and I first just took some white paint and painted the entire tray white so that we would have a nice face. I took some blue painters tape to create the flag lines in my patriotic tray and they each measured about an inch and a quarter wide. And then I took my red paint, and this is by Apple Barrel, and it's called Flag Red, so it was very fitting. And I just painted that middle stripe red and then left it to dry. To create the stars on the front area of my tray, I took a piece of painter's tape and I am just drawing out some stars. Then I took my scissors and cut the stars out of the painter's tape and placed it on the front of the tray. 
This is going to leave a star design on the tray. So after I paint over it, I'll eventually, after it dries, pull off the painter's tape stars. And even though I painted it blue, when I pull off that painter's tape, the white stars will be left behind. I'm using a Cricut weaving tool to pull off the painter's tape stars, but you could also just use tweezers. The last step, once our red paint was dried, is to peel off that painter's tape to reveal the red and white stripes. The next DIY is a tag sign with one of my favorite quotes, home of the free because of the brave. To begin this DIY, I'm taking one of the new Dollar Tree tag signs that say be our guest and have a little space for you to write in your Wi-Fi password on chalk. It's really cute and I might be using it in a different DIY, but for now I wanted to use the back of it. So I just took the back and I am painting it with a color called English Navy. And I do recognize the irony of using a color called English Navy on an American DIY, but we'll just go with it. Then I took this vinyl paper that is new to the Dollar Tree. It's this really gorgeous glittery color. They had it in silver, a darker glitter, and a rose gold. And I went ahead and used my cutting machine to put this quote onto our tag. Then I'm taking my wood stars. Again, I got these at Hobby Lobby. I got a hundred for, I believe, $2.99. And then I took the silver vinyl. And this is a way to use the vinyl if you don't have a cutting machine. I just went ahead and traced out the stars and then applied the glitter vinyl like a sticker. And then the third little star in the corner there, I just painted a dark red. I liked the jute hanger that the sign originally came with. I thought it looked really cute and rustic, so I went ahead and just tied that back onto our patriotic tag. The next DIY is a set of wooden firecrackers. I saw these at Target for I think three or five dollars, but they are all sold out and it seems like no one can find them in stores or online, so I wanted to recreate them using Dollar Tree supplies. The three wood pieces are actually a plunger handle. Yup, a plunger. So I got one of the plungers at the Dollar Tree and just cut it into three equal pieces using a saw. I painted all three pieces white and then I used some blue painter's tape to really tape out my design. I put it around the top because eventually I'll be painting that blue but I didn't want any of the red paint getting in the way and then I just cut down the blue painter's tape to size to make stripes. And then using some red paint, I ended up mixing brick red and flag red from Apple Barrel. I went ahead and painted the pieces. Then once it was dried, I peeled it off and I had red and white stripes. Now it was time to move back to the top of the wood pieces. So I taped those out just where the red stripes and I guess white stripes too started. And then I just went in with some blue, again, using English Navy by Apple Barrel, and I painted the entire tops of our wood pieces. Once the tops were dry from the blue paint, I was able to peel off that painter's tape. And to make the stars on our wood firecrackers, I went ahead and used that star hole punch again and just some plain white cardstock and cut out a bunch of stars. And then I just used a regular glue stick and staggered the stars all along the top of our wood piece. I once again used those wooden stars from Hobby Lobby and I took the vinyl permanent paper from the Dollar Tree and just traced out the wood stars onto it and applied it like our sticker and that is going to be the topper of our firecracker. Then I took some nautical jute rope that I got recently from the Dollar Tree and I hot glued the stars onto one end and then I hot glued the other end onto the top of our wooden firecrackers. Then to hold them all together, at first I was going to go with just some plain jute, but I wanted to be a little bit more cohesive and use the same material that I used on the top of the firecrackers, so I just took that jute and wrapped it around the three of them. Moving right along to the next patriotic DIY, we have an America outline decor piece. If you see this wood cutout of America at your Dollar Tree, you have got to pick it up because they are going fast. So I actually found this in the patriotic section and it's meant to be, I think, like a children's coloring toy because it came with markers and said that it was a coloring set. 
and I actually did not want to color it so I just painted it in a dark blue and then I found this gorgeous printable and I will be sure to link it below. There are quite a few different designs so again I will be sure to link that below for you all to use. And I just traced it out and then used a glue stick to then adhere it onto our wood cutout of America. If you have a frame laying around your house that you can use, that would work. I just picked up this four by six one at the Dollar Tree and I'm removing everything from it, including the glass. And I thought it was a pretty frame, but it didn't really go with the America. So I decided to just paint it a neutral color and I just mixed white with some brown to create this kind of gray beige color. I cut out a piece of plain white cardstock and put that in the frame. And then to attach the wood cutout of America, I am first putting down a tumbling tower block from the Dollar Tree. Then I will hot glue down the wood cutout of America on top of the tumbling tower block for a more 3D effect. Next up, we have a patriotic themed flower vase. I made this using an old glass coffee bottle from the Dollar Tree, but you could also use the glass Starbucks coffees that you see in a lot of grocery stores. The first thing I did was take some of my white Waverly chalk paint and paint the entire bottle white. While the bottle was drying, I moved on to the wooden star, which is going to be the centerpiece of our vase. Again, these are the same wood stars I've used in many previous DIYs today. They are from Hobby Lobby, and I am just painting it like the American flag. So I left a little blue area where I'm going to end up putting stars and a white area. While that was drying, I went ahead and cut out stars and stripes forever using my cutting machine and some black vinyl. Then I went in with a toothpick and some red and white paint to put the finishing touches on my star flag. If you don't have a cutting machine to write out stars and stripes forever, you could use some of the letter stickers that the Dollar Tree has or just use a paint pen. After using hot glue to place the star down, I moved on to the top part of our vase and I just wrapped some natural jute around a couple of times to give this a more rustic look. Lastly, to finish off this DIY, I made a triple loop bow and just hot glued it down onto the center of our vase. The last DIY in today's patriotic themed video is a USA sign using my interchangeable sign that I made earlier in the year. If you want to see the tutorial on how exactly to make this interchangeable sign, I will link that above but I absolutely love it. It's great because I can change out all the decor that goes in the frames according to the season. And I have a Velcro at the top so I can just Velcro on and off different bows to go with each holiday and season. I'm using this USA hanging sign that I got from the Dollar Tree and the letters are already so sparkly and pretty that I didn't really have to do anything to them, just clip them in to the picture frames. I love making layered bows, so I'm starting off with this red gingham ribbon and I went ahead and made the largest bow out of that. Then I made a smaller white bow and this burlap one is what the sign came with and I really liked it. So I hot glued that one on top and put them all together. In keeping with the interchangeable theme, I am hot gluing a piece of Velcro to the back of the bow. That way I can place the bow on and when I'm ready to change it out for a new season or holiday, I can take it right off. And that completes all patriotic DIYs for this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.